Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today I'm back with a review of an industry standard small diaphragm condenser, the Neumann KM184. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $850. Like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. For this review, I'm running the microphone directly into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. My gain is set at around 130. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so make sure to check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now, let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course, you are going to get the microphone. You'll get a foam clown nose windscreen. You'll get a firm microphone mount with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter and a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I don't have any complaints here. It has an all metal chassis as well as a very fine metal mesh grill on the front. As we move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches. On the rear of the mic, you will find the XLR port. And if it matters to you, this microphone is made in Germany. Now, as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 36.5 dB, a self noise of only 13 dBA weighted, a max SPL of 138 dB, an impedance of only 50 ohms, and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Now I am spinning around the KM184 to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees, here's the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we go. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now normally right here I would include a plosive test, but being that this microphone wasn't designed for close-up vocal use, especially without a pop filter, I'm not going to do that because I will give you an example. If I breathe on this microphone, it sounds as though the world is ending. I don't want to destroy an $850 microphone, so let's move on, use a pop filter, use the windscreen. I am almost certain that zero people will do this in the real world, but here is how the microphone sounds right on top of it. Now I'm about three inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it sounds. Now I'm about six inches off of the microphone, and here is how it sounds. Now I'm about one foot away from the microphone, about two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I want to include a few samples of this microphone in different positions. Currently I have the microphone a little bit off axis pointed at my mouth at about 6 inches away and here is how it sounds. Next I am under booming the microphone at about 9 or 10 inches. In the bottom of the frame you can just see the clown nose popping in and here is how this sounds. And here is how the microphone sounds when it is being overhead boomed at a distance of about 8 or 9 inches. Again, you can see the clown nose just popping in the top of the frame, but here is how this sounds. Now I am taking off Alan from Sound Speeds and typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And in case any gamers are just ballers, here is how it sounds, typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Just for good measure, here is how the microphone sounds in the same environment but under booming. And just because we can, here is how the microphone sounds in a standard overhead position. Now to see how effective the mount and the microphone are at rejecting shocks, I'm going to tap on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Now I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I want to hear what kind of impact the foam windscreen has on the microphone's frequency response. 
First, here is how the microphone sounds without the foam windscreen, and here is how it sounds with the foam windscreen. And for good measure, here's another sample speaking into the microphone without the foam clown nose on it. And again, here is how the microphone sounds six inches away with the foam windscreen on. Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the mic we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones that are available so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and hear it in the context of the market. We'll start on the microphone that we're reviewing. This is the KM184, six inches away, gain set at 130, and here is how it sounds. First up, I am on the Rode M5. This goes for about $200 for a pair of these microphones. Six inches off, gain still set at 130. Check the lower third, and let's jump back to the KM184. Back again on the Neumann KM184, here is how it sounds. Let's do another comparison. Next, I am on the Sennheiser E614. This goes for about $200, six inches off, gain set at 130. I will have to boost this quite a bit more in post, but here is how this sounds. In case you forgot how it sounds, this is the KM184, nothing has changed. Let's jump to another microphone. Now I am on the SE Electronics SE8. This goes for about $285, no pad, no filter engaged. Six inches off, gain still set at 130, and here is how this sounds. Let's do a bunch more comparisons. Hey, we're back on the Neumann KM184, six inches off, gain at 130. Let's do another comparison. Now I am on the Octava or Octava MK012 with the cardioid capsule. This goes for about $300, six inches off, gain set at 130, and here is how this sounds compared to the Neumann. I bet you wouldn't guess it, but we are back on the Neumann KM184. Hello, Neumann. Here is how it sounds. Let's jump to another one. Now I am on the Bayer Dynamic MC930. This goes for about $460. No pad, no filter engaged. Six inches off. Gain still set at 130. And here is how this sounds compared to the Neumann. I can't believe that was the first time I did the hello Neumann bit in this video. That's shocking. But this is the KM184. Let's hear another microphone. Just for good measure, this is the Neumann KM185. It is the hypercardioid version of this microphone. I wanted to include it so you could hear if there's a big tonal difference between the cardioid and the hypercardioid versions. There you go. Let's jump back to the 184 and do a couple more comparisons. We are getting close to the end, but first, this is the KM184. Here's how it sounds. Check the lower third. Let's go to another one. Now I am on the SE Electronics RN17. This goes for about $1,200. I am six inches off. My gain was increased to about four o'clock because this is a quiet one. And here is how this sounds compared to the Neumann. Let's jump back to it and do one final comparison. And we have one last microphone. You all know what it's going to be, but first, KM184, here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the last one. And finally, we are on the Neumann U87AI. Hello, Neumann. This goes for about $3,700. Cardioid mode, no pads, no filters, six inches off, gain set at 1130. And here is how this sounds compared to a small diaphragm condenser. Not a fair comparison, but this is meant to be a control. There you go. Let us jump to the music test now. I don't really have a song to sing I don't really have the words I'd need to make a song to sing about California's too expensive Yeah. I know in the past I said my lyrics never made sense. This week, my lyrics made perfect sense. They are inarguable. Don't you dare say a word. 
They made perfect sense. Let us go to the conclusion before you can say anything else. They made sense. All right, I don't know what else to say other than I love this microphone. I think this microphone sounds absolutely incredible. And first up as far as pros has to be the self noise of this thing. 13 dBA for a large diaphragm condenser would be getting a little bit high, but for a small diaphragm condenser that is very respectable and quite low. Also, the off-axis coloration on this thing is very inoffensive. Therefore, if you have any kind of reflections or audio coming into the microphone from the sides or the rears, any kind of bleed, that's not going to ruin the recording. And then as far as cons, I have to get a little bit nitpicky. The foam that they provide attenuates the top end quite a bit. It's just not as transparent as I was expecting or as transparent as I would like given the quality of the microphone and the amount that you're paying for it. And then next, this is more of an FYI than a con, but I feel obligated to point it out. This microphone does really bad with plosives. It does really bad with wind. So if you plan on using this in a windy environment, if you plan on using this in a vocal booth for voiceover, if you plan on using it to overhead boom spoken word, I highly recommend using the provided foam windscreen or some other form of wind protection or use a high quality pop filter because you will know if you send any air in this general direction, if you blink too much, it'll pop the microphone. So be careful. And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I think it's workable, but it's certainly not anything that I'm going to be reaching for. We get a relatively neutral sound signature, but because we are close miking, we get a bit of a bump in the low mids, and then we get a generally flat midsection, and then a smooth and more of a tame top end. It is not exciting or aggressive sounding, it is very calming. I enjoyed it on the electric, but it's not something that would be my first choice for that application. Next up on the acoustic guitar, I absolutely loved this thing for that application. Again, we're getting more of that neutral sound signature. Nothing is too exaggerated. We don't get a boomy body, we don't get a forward midsection, and we don't get a top heavy sound either. But at the same time, we maintain that detail and articulation and capture all the interest and information off of the strings. It just sounds incredible if you're looking for a more tame and realistic capturing of the acoustic guitar. Next up for singing, after listening to this microphone, I'm left wondering why don't more people use SDCs for vocals? Is it because of the plosives? Because I think it sounds absolutely fantastic. It gives you this realistic and detailed sound without coming across as overbearing or harsh or overboosted. It gives you such a natural sound. I absolutely loved this thing for singing vocals. And finally for spoken word, I know I sound like a broken record, but I absolutely loved it. It's smooth, it's detailed, it's articulate, it's natural, it's neutral. It's all of the adjectives that I look for in a microphone. I absolutely adore this thing for spoken word, whether it be direct on like this, or I have been playing around with overhead booming and trying to figure out that methodology and approach to miking. This thing just sounds great in all of those situations, and it is one of my favorites that I have heard. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Neumann KM184? After those glowing comments, I am sure it is no surprise, but yes, I would. I liked it on every single sound source I tried it on. I loved it on spoken word. I really, really liked it on singing. I loved it on acoustic guitar. And then I liked it on the electric guitar. I think it is very workable because it's not overly harsh. It's just not the most exciting or lively sounding microphone for that application, but I think you can get some usable tones out of it. So if you are somebody who is looking for a small diaphragm condenser with a relatively low self noise and a sound signature that is a little bit more natural and neutral and smooth sounding, 
and your budget allows for an $850 microphone, then I would absolutely recommend this thing because I think it sounds outstanding and there are zero deal breakers for this microphone. All right, that is it for this video. I've got nothing else for you. These people over here are amazing and feel free to watch the video directly beneath me if you feel so obliged. I will talk to you at a later date. Bye-bye. Whoa, boop.